Binding of Books from Ultima V, Lazarus. The tome thou dost hold in thy hands is not merely a repository of knowledge. It is the fruit of the labors of author and bookbinder both, for while the person who writes the words must within must first research and discover and learn before putting pen to parchment, the one who binds the book also has hours of work to put into the item's production. Take these pages, for example. The pages of this book are parchment, but they might well have been paper instead. Parchment is taken from the skin of sheep, goats, and cows, scraped of its meat, and then tanned and stretched until it is thin and pliable. It often takes weeks, and it is not merely a matter of waiting. A poorly stretched skin may produce pages of uneven thickness or worse holes in pages. Paper is made in many different ways. The two most common are the beating of reeds and the grinding of scrap fabric. The latter of these makes a softer, stronger page than the former, but the reeds are easier to come by and easier to press into pages. Both parchment and paper are, however, bound the same way. When the parchment or paper is dry and ready to be bound into a book, it is folded into a number of equally sized pieces. Eight is a common number and simple enough to accomplish. Merely fold the sheet in half along its longest side, then in half again the other direction. Take then the ends and fold them away from one another. Thou wilt then have a roughly M-shaped parcel. The two peaks shall be sewn into the book's binding, and the rest of the pages shall be cut so that they are able to be turned freely. This operation gives the book, binding, book binder 16 writing surfaces with which to work. For an average book, many more of these parcels will need to be put together. Important to note, at least as far as the parchment is concerned, for the difference is not apparent in paper. The flesh side versus the hair side of parchment. Most frequently, the hair side will be darker than the flesh side, and this dichotomy will be all the more apparent if the flesh side was matched to the hair side as adjacent pages. Yet this will not occur if the pages are folded. Instead, each pair of pages will lie flesh to flesh, hair to hair. In the likely event that a hole is pulled in the parchment, never fear. It happens, even the best books made. Few bookbinders would discard a parchment because of a hole. At best, it can be cut out if it is near an edge. Otherwise, the scribe will simply write around it. In some fine books, the hole is even given a border, making it part of the page's decoration. The binding of the book itself is none too simple as well. Leather sheets over wood are one of the most popular bindings used, tooled and decorated with gems and metal studs. Sometimes thick leather is used alone, and sometimes wood is used alone. But most fine bindings use a combination of both. The metal studs often found at the corners and edges of a book are not mere decoration. In many libraries, the books are stored not vertically, but horizontally, one against the other. If a pair of books rested upon each other in anything other than the driest weather, the covers would eventually stick together, as this would cause irreparable damage to both books the precaution of metal studs is taken instead. All this is only the simplest beginning to the art of book binding. Only a summary lies here, and nothing yet hast thou read of the mixing of inks, the tanning of the leather, or the markings and scripting of the pages themselves. Yet let this serve as a reminder that 
all books are sacred works of art and craft, to be treasured and prized as the jewels that sometimes mark their surfaces.